Hello and welcome back. In this video what we're going to be talking about is the flow of malware analysis and the first thing you want to really uh, to look for. So it's called triage analysis and it's basically asking certain questions, doing certain things in order to get a better understanding of the malware that you're looking for. Well looking at even. Just before we get into that, if you do have any questions, uh, head over to Twitter and the subreddit, post them there. Comments obviously in the in YouTube as well, that's fine. And if you want to pledge anything to Patreon, then that link will be there as well. If you've already done that, then great, thank you so much for that. Um, and obviously over there as well, there's a few bits of information, a few rewards, so you can get some one-to-one -one time with me and things like that. But check it out, it's cool. So, this is... This is basically without going into each and every single section of it. No, we're not going to talk about static or dynamic analysis today. This is just a, a video to go through triage analysis. So as you can see uh, from the notepad, we've got a little section here. So the checklist. So this is so you can build your report. What you want to do first is you want to look at file context and delivery. So how did that file get there? What's the context? Why is it there? Did it come from an email? Did it was it downloaded from a browser? Then you need to ask yourself if you've got malware um, antivirus on your system, then was it quarantined by that? Did the antivirus pick it up? If not, then it's probably obfuscated. Is it hiding under a different process? Now you're not gonna know that one until you actually do process hacker and do the dynamic analysis. But you can say that let's say you download a brand new uh, let's say the easiest one to remember is uh, Adobe uh, Flash updates. Uh, people download those every single day, and all of the most of the time those are loaded with malware because they're easy to manipulate. So uh, people will download it willy nilly because they think that they require it that more badly. But it's what we mean by under a different process. It, it installing that installs the malware as well. Is it hiding in there? You need to know. Next thing you need to do is you need to determine any file information and a header analysis. So what's the file type? So once it was downloaded in raw format, what's the, what's the file type? Is it packed? Is it unpacked? Is it an EXE format? Is it a PDF? Is it a malicious Word document? You need to know that. Put that in there. Then what you can do is you can put it in a hex editor or, or PE Studio or something like that and verify it. So if you put it into a hex editor, on the top line of the hex, there'll be two two uh, letters. If it's an EXE, for example, it's going to say M for Mike, Z for Zulu, some MZ. So it's going to say, so you'll know it's an EXE. Whatever those two are, if you haven't seen them before, just quickly Google it. It'll verify the file type for you. Once you've done that, uh, you're going to pass the PE header, pet, uh, the PE header using CFF Explorer. So chuck it into CFF Explorer, and it's going to give you everything about that, including the dependency walker as well. So you can determine what resources it has. Does it drop any uh, DLLs? Does it import anything? Does it try to make any? Uh, does it make any counter processes? That sort of thing. So dependency walker will run you through that. Next thing you want to do is, I've got this down as simple search, but I always say chuck it into PE Studio first. You want to find out if that malware is actually known. If it's known, then the rest of the process should be relatively easy. If it's unknown, that's where things get a little bit, a little bit more interesting. So if it's if it's known, just take down the take down the hashes for it and provide those in your report. If not, you can use a tool called Quick Hash. Uh, that's to get the hash for the file. And then once you get that, you shove that into Google and see if anyone else has picked up on it as well. If not, then it's okay you've got yourself an unknown malware next is to collect strings so I'm a big advocate for Windows strings it's a Windows U, uh, utility uh, you've got to download it that's fine um, in the tools of the trade it's there so you can go back to that one and download it if you want and all you have to do is make sure that that uh, that strings format is on well that strings file is on wherever it is that you're doing the strings from Put in strings and then the exe, and I'll bring out all the strings for you in a cmd command prompt. And then you just gotta copy them in, paste them into a report somewhere or in a separate file. Next, you wanna do is you wanna check it, uh, antivirus vendors. 
Now, just because yours didn't pick it up doesn't mean others aren't going to pick it up, so upload that bad boy to Virus Total. Get it uploaded. If if it still comes back as zero, then you've got yourself a juicy bit of malware there. Well, hopefully you've got yourself a bit uh, juicy bit of malware. It might just be an ordinary file, which might be suspicious. But anyways, upload it there. If there's any information, then take all that information down. Now, the next one is a quick virtual machine detonation. Now, you can do this do two ways. You can either one, do it on your own virtual machine, or two, you can use hybridanalysis.com. Uh, so, if you have a hash or anything like that, search for it and then try and find hybridanalysis.com. On hybridanalysis.com, it gives you a full behavioral analysis report. So, you can read through it, find out what it does, what it drops, where it drops it. If you're still interested in doing it, then you can capture the network information. Use Sandboxy. So run that, run the malware in Sandboxy. Capture the network traffic using Wireshark and Process Hacker. And I've put them both there because Process Hacker also can monitor uh, network information. And so can Wireshark as well, obviously. So when it comes to capturing network information, then you're just detonating it and seeing if it does it call out to a process does it call out to a server is it trying to connect to a specific IP address take all that information down the ports a web address if it gives you a server address if it gives you an IP address if it gives you it take all of that down and that's how you can start compiling the information for your report now after it then that's when you go into static and dynamic analysis and that's obviously going to be a separate video so we'll discuss that it should be out by now because these are going to come up in batches of three so it's going to be this one, uh, static and dynamic slash behavioral analysis, because I put those both together. And check that out. And yeah, that, that's all That's all this video really is. Just go through triage analysis a bit, the flow of malware analysis. So yeah, as long as you've got your starting point, which is the triage analysis here, then you're good to go. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, as usual, everything will be in the description. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.